You got it. Well, a major shift in the early polling. What promises to be a red-hot U.S. Senate race in Pennsylvania, Republican Pat Toomey has surged ahead of Democrat uh, Joe Sestak just two weeks after polls had Sestak taking his first lead. Which leads us to ask... Our Bruce Gordon, what happened? Well, Carrie Lee, I think two things. First of all, the normal bounce, the normal uptick that you'd expect for Sestak after his high-profile primary victory has apparently worn off. Mm. Let's look at the numbers real quickly. May 19th, Rasmussen reports has Sestak over Toomey, 46% to 42%. Sestak's first lead. The new numbers, a big change. Toomey, 45%. Sestak, 38%. That's an 11 percentage point swing in just over two weeks. Now, on Memorial Day, out in New York, PA, Sestak again told me he saw nothing illegal in the White House job offer. Remember number two there? Offer designed to entice him to drop his primary bid against Arlen Specter. And he said voters weren't asking him about the controversy. Perhaps, but our new Rasmussen polling shows 72% of likely Pennsylvania voters have followed the job offer story somewhat or very closely. And here are the really troubling numbers for Sestak. When asked how important the job offer incident would be in determining how folks will vote come November, no surprise, Republicans, conservatives said it was very important. But look at this, 35% of Democrats and 49% of self-described moderates said the story was somewhat or very important. Reaction today from the GOP Senate nominee, Pat Toomey. I think Joe would have been better off if he had been more forthcoming and just cleared the air on this insider Washington deal and let it get behind us. But I think at the end of the day, voters are going to be focused on the substantive policy differences. My approach to getting job growth and getting our economy moving and restoring fiscal balance to Washington versus Joe's approach of just growing government and increasing our debts. Pat Toomey always on message there. Lots and lots of time till November, but for now, the attempt by the White House to help Arlen Specter seems to be putting a bit of a taint on Joe Sestak. Joining me now, Scott Kofina, a Philadelphia attorney and former associate counsel in the George W. Bush White House. Scott, thank you for joining us. You have written that this job offer was a pretty clear violation of the law. 18 U.S. Code 600 offering an inducement in exchange for political activity, correct? That's right, Bruce, especially with um, Congressman Sestak's original story, which was uh, pretty straightforward. He was offered a, uh, a job to drop out of the race, um, and it was, the job came from uh, the White House, which is how he originally put it. Now, ultimately, a prosecution, I think, will be difficult uh, because of the revelations last week that Bill Clinton was involved, which somewhat muddied the message, uh, put a go-between between Rahm Emanuel and the White House and Joe Sestak, and Joe Sestak himself changing his, sto his story and suggest, uh, saying that it was more a suggestion of possible positions within the administration rather than a job offer, as he originally said. There is the technical aspect of the law. There it is in black and white. And then there's the practical realities. You and I both know that for years, presidents have thanked their biggest donors by handing them jobs in the uh, ambassadorships and some of the plum assignments around the company, around the country. You, uh, around the world, I should say, uh, you donate $100,000 to my campaign. The next thing you know, you've got a great job as ambassador to Jamaica, for example. How is this different, if at all? And do we need to rethink some of those? laws if they're being ignored and have been for years. Well, I'd love to have $100,000 to donate to a campaign, but uh, putting that aside, um, you know, the real question here is whether there's a quid pro quo. I mean, people reward supporters not necessarily because of their support, but supporters tend to be people who agree with the policies of the candidate and ultimately then the president if he wins. So it's not surprising that supporters wind up in some of these positions because they tend to be like-minded. But again, I come back to the quid pro quo. If a candidate were to say, you donate $100,000 to my campaign and I'll give you an ambassadorship to Haiti, well, that's the same crime. Um, and so uh, in that respect, uh, I don't think that's business as usual. I don't think that's done all the time. Um, again, it's how explicit the connection is. And that's again, is what makes the uh, prosecution difficult um, with respect to the Sestak offer and the, jo and the Romanoff job offer that came to light in the last couple of days. And clearly there are some more calls from Republicans every day calling for more of a special investigation. So far, no Democrats are, are biting on that issue, although they've certainly said there should have been more transparency. Scott Kofina, thanks for your time and your insights today. Thanks, Bruce. Great to be here. Bruce, thank you. A dire warning from Governor Ed Rendell. He says if Congress does